Hey guys, it's Matthew from Plant Daddy Podcast. I am coming back with a video that I basically need to film now because I'm about to run out of my window of time to do this. In our episode about fiddly figs, I described how mine was great and doing well, but that I needed to do some strategic pruning in order to get it to maintain a beautiful form long term. So today, I'm gonna to try out some air layering for kind of the first time. I say kind of because I've done this with aeroids and for like a Monstera, either Deliciosa or Adansonii, it's pretty easy to just wrap some damp sphagnum around some nodes, seal it up, and then just let them root. However, the fiddly fig, this is really like a woody tree. So a different strategy is required. So what I'm gonna do it's kind of in about this area. I'm gonna, with an X-Acto knife, carefully remove a little band of bark. This is gonna stop nutrient flow up and down to tell the tree that it still has stuff up above here. The part above here will also recognize that it doesn't have roots below here. So it's gonna try to grow some. I'm gonna use a rooting hormone and it's actually a brand that I've never used before, but I heard good reviews, good things. So I'm gonna be using Clonex today. And basically you put that on the exposed layer of kind of subdermal tissue, wrapped up with sphagnum, and then get that sealed and you just let the plant grow some roots. What the goal is, is that then I can chop it off below that point, pop this portion up as its own bushier plant, and then hopefully this trunk will grow out some lateral growth below and I'll have two bushier plants. So let's get started. Bear with me because I've never done this before. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just carefully cut just through the bark. This is fairly easy to do because the bark isn't terribly thick and the knife kind of stops cutting when it reaches that lower layer that you don't want to go through. Okay, so I've gone around the whole way. Now I'm gonna go about an inch lower and do this one more time. So, you can see there's already a little bit of sap forming. So now I'm just gonna carefully just peel this away. This seriously feels pretty traumatizing that I'm doing this to this plant, but I've read a lot about this. This is my first time doing it, so please wish me luck. Now, before I began working, I also made sure that my X-Acto knife was sterilized so that I don't introduce any infection. Because as you can imagine, by removing essentially the skin of the tree, I am now creating an environment where it could easily develop something that we don't want going on with a house plant. And I'll be honest, this is a little easier than I thought it would be. I just wanna make sure that I'm just getting this top layer of bark without digging too much lower, because if I did that, then I would run the risk of the top not being able to draw water and nutrients from the root system. Oh, 
I just have this one little stretch left. Has anyone else ever had a really nerve wracking houseplant kind of situation like this where they were really out on a limb and not quite sure what they're doing? Yeah, I think that's a familiar experience. Okay, so now I have this section of the tree that if I just left this, it wouldn't be happy. Um, but we're not gonna do that. We're instead going to take some of this rooting hormone and I used uh, a variety that's more of a paste than a powder. You can see it's got this lovely kind of purple violet color. So I'm gonna apply this with a paintbrush just so that I make sure that I get it well and good. Little of this seems to go a long way, so that's nice. But I wanna make sure that I'm really getting it on there because as the tree loses some sap with this new wound, I wanna make sure that, that the rooting hormone is actually in contact with these cells. As you can see, this plant is like outgrowing its space. Okay, so that is now nicely covered. The next part that I'm going to do is going to be adding some moss. Now, I took basically just like a Ziploc storage bag. I cut just the little corners off and then into uh, the side, just the slightest bit. So that this folded over bottom, I could then fold out and then cut one of the open sides. And so now I have a pretty long sheet of plastic that's easier to work with than cellophane. Cellophane clings to itself and it can be kind of a, a pain to wrap it. So this is my solution. I've also dated it with today in case I can't remember when I did this. So here's the fun part. I'm going to try to pack the moss around this portion while also holding the bag. Okay, and this is a pretty good sized ball. Now I'm just going to wrap it up that the top and bottom clear the moss bowl in order to keep it nice and moist. And this moss is already a little damp, but I'm gonna be able to add more water to the top um, as I need just in case. So I'm gonna secure this with a length of twine, get that tied up in there. And I'll do the same on the top. I'm just gonna poke that down to make sure that it's really, really well in there. I don't mind if the top is a little bit loose because I'm probably gonna be opening this, not that regularly, but regularly enough. So I'm just doing a loose knot there. So what we end up with is basically just a little section on this tree that's gonna root in so I can chop off the top. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna be sharing updates of this and the additional pruning that I wanna do to this tree, which includes taking out some of the top growth to root in water and hopefully encourage the top portion to develop a little bit more bushiness as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
have a good day everyone.